Hi everyone, how are you doing? So I think we have a special guest, Tamana, on board with us and I think she should be logging in anytime now and we should get started. Hi everyone. Tamana should be with us in a couple of seconds. I hope you guys are all doing well. Hope you're having a peaceful Sunday, staying safe at home. Hello. Hey, how's it going? Hello. Very good. Uh, now is this the is the fastest I've got anyone to join me. This is the fastest I've got anyone. Otherwise, you know, all the names coming so quickly and I'm searching for your name all over. So how's it going? How are you doing? Doing great. I'm just going to set the camera because... Um, sure, sure. Somehow in these lives, of my, I don't know, I find it... I do find things with it. Hi, hey. everyone. We are visible. Okay, then. Yes, Luke, Great. at last. How have you been, Tamana? How's it going for you in quarantine? You can hear me, right? So, um, I think it's been, it's been this entire roller coaster of having, uh, really enjoying it. Um, then there are points there are um, where all of us, I think, have been feeling, um, you know, emotionally um, not so good because being contained and, and at your own house and feeling like almost mit, mit being, you know, feeling like jail. Uh, that is something I think I was like, I've been dealing with and I think everyone is dealing with. But uh, keeping, you know, the present scenario in mind, there's just nothing better that anybody could do. So this is what we're supposed to do. But I think this roller coaster has uh, given me a lot of time to uh, introspect. And uh, I have actually enjoyed this period because I'm quite a home bird. So I, I enjoy being at home and, you know, spending time with family and, um, you know, really getting to, um, like, take care of small, small things that I would have normally not been able to address because right. I'm away okay. mostly working. So, um, so, yeah, I think I've got a chance to do that. And uh, I'm living in Mumbai right now, so I'm here. Where are you right now? Are you in uh, which part? Of I'm in Goa. I'm still in Goa. Goa. Yeah. Been here since yeah. the start of lockdown. Yeah. You've been lucky. You made the right decision <laughs> in Goa because I'm sure it's uh, is, it, is it really hot there or how is the weather there? Oh yeah, we have we have we've had a scorching summer, like you know, 38, 39, 40 degrees. It's it's been rough this summer, but can't complain actually. I mean, we have fresh air around us. We have, like, if I just, uh, you know, turn my camera. You can hear me, right, Tamar? Uh, Luke, could you hear me? I could hear you. Yeah, I, I, I did. I, I kind of lost you in the middle. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I want to ask you something. So, I mean, yes, please. Sorry, I think there's a lag in our voices. There's a lag in our voices. Now I wanted to ask you, how are you staying fit through this time? A lot of people, are, you know, something, uh, something funny, Tana. Before lockdown, people said, "I wish we had more time to work out." I wish we had more time to spend with our family, learn to meditate and eat well. Okay. Now today during lockdown, people yeah. are saying we're waiting for lockdown to get over so that we can start working out so that we can start going out, spending time with our families <laughs> and stuff. What are you doing at yeah. home to stay fit? What are you doing currently at home? So, um, first of all, I think this is something that I can, I'm, I'm just saying this to everyone out there is to not feel the pressure of being productive in this lockdown. At least that's something that's actually made me a lot more productive by not stressing about it. Because even in this period that we are all at home and many of us are actually working very rigorously from home. Like I know a lot of my friends who are working a lot, maybe mm -hmm. more than usual. Uh, they kind of work is piled up a lot and they need to address it. Um, then there are people like me who, are, who I mean, I'm getting like, way too much time to chill uh, but to be honest I think I've been able to one thing not take the pressure of uh, constantly feeling like you need to do something or you need to address it and sometimes the pressure causes a lot more um, sure. you know 
doesn't let you address what you actually need to like in my case in a normal day i could uh, maybe work out for an hour that would be uh, the amount of time i would give to uh, to a workout because that's how much i could give but now there are times you know my workout spreads over 2 to 2 and a half hours and i'm wow. able to sustain myself as well because i have enough rest on a normal mm-hmm. day it would have been impossible to have that kind of rest Correct. so um so so yeah i am enjoying that period where i'm able to take uh you know uh extend my workouts but my workouts now i, I had to reinvent them i could not mm-hmm. i mean i haven't been able to i have been when i got locked down i had no weights at home i had no equipment at home so um so i had to just kind of go to like the good old uh, videos on on the internet and this kind of search youtube and find videos that are exciting uh, uh many of my trainers helped me out uh, working out online um okay but as been getting hot i feel like it, i find it better to train outside than at home because i think mm-hmm. training in in air, in air conditioning is is probably the worst thing one can do but it's never yeah. been my i don't even enjoy mm-hmm. gyms that are that like maybe air conditioned because i feel like that doesn't serve any purpose right um so um so yeah i think i've uh, i've also like tried to learn new things like the, the in my in my building i have a area where um there's a punching bag mm-hmm. so i mean even learning something like you know kickboxing yeah. while just because you're you're left with that so now we're kind of making use of whatever i whatever we have around i remember right. one of the training sessions i was doing with my trainer and i ended up just using like suits at home and vegetables to kind of make weights out <laughs> of it and like lift it as weight so right. i think uh, we're just making do with what we have and but it turns out great it's not i don't feel like i'm like i'm missing out on anything in fact i think i've become more creative So no one can have an excuse that we can't work out at home because we don't have equipment or anything like that, right? There are so many because different various ways. Yeah, we need to just lift ourselves. Yeah. I think if yeah, we do body that, weight. it's a lot. It's Absolutely. a lot. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, tell us something, if you have a craving for sweet foods, what are your favorite choices? How do you manage your cravings? How do you maintain your figure? How do you maintain your skin? Simple tips that you're able to do right from the comforts of your own home. So, uh by while we been remember once i got on the plan i've been off dairy i've been off mm-hmm. gluten uh, of course i forget that i'm off dairy and gluten when i want to uh, treat myself yeah. uh, mm-hmm. i conveniently forget that but uh, but most of the times i am uh, gluten i don't eat gluten and when i feel like eating the uh, anything sugary i end up i end up baking banana bread for myself Oh, I like that. Uh, yeah. Which I like because it's natu- because the bananas that I add to the bread is already sweet, so sweet. I don't yeah. add further in- any sugar into it. And um, I end up adding honey if I feel like the you know the the trick is to use really ripe bananas. Right. That makes it. They're easy. sweeter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we don't really need to um, put any kind of sweetener. Uh, you can even use less of honey if you need to. uh if you don't want to add honey but i do okay. it because i enjoy it and i like the taste of it so um so yeah that's how i kind of tackle my sweet cravings and then there are and everyone's a baker in this lockdown i think one at some point has baked uh and uh, and i know a lot of my friends who who keep sending me like goodies which are gluten free because they know i don't eat gluten um so yeah i've been getting cookies by being sent and uh, way too much yummy stuff has happened but tell me something you know a lot of people eat with guilt a lot of people eat with guilt do you eat with guilt do you ever find yourself eating with guilt like you eat something that you really really want to eat and then after that you end up feeling guilty about it and stuff like that so how do you manage these things yeah i think you know uh, i remember when i got on to a got on to uh, a plan with you um a major issue that i think hadn't been addressed and i think most of us don't address which is a very basic issue is gut health mm-hmm. uh sometimes it's not that uh everything that you're eating is bad sometimes you just your gut is not in the right it's not in the right state to absorb all the nutrients that you're actually giving it through the food and right. um and i think for me um also it's very it's also psychological to think that to constantly feel like if you're eating something that you're not supposed to eat 
it's bad mm-hmm. for you but i think anything in a reasonable quantity i think has never mm-hmm. been has never really Absolutely. harmed anyone like i like i always say like a salad will not make you thin so a burger will not make you like one burger will not make you fat absolutely um, right so yeah um so i think in a in a balance of course uh, mm-hmm. but i feel like it's a, like for me it's been i'm i can be um, super honest and say for me during the lockdown i was finding that difficult the balance okay. was what was difficult because when you're at home you're constantly able to access um you know your kitchen and your fridge right. which is terrible because you have to always go back and you're like what's there in the fridge and then and then it all kind of goes down but i think this period has taught me a lot more self control than any other time of my life because when i'm at work there is a natural sense of discipline that comes in but uh, right. being at home it's been way more difficult to be disciplined than um, and my house is we're all foodies so it's it's <laughs> been quite tricky to do it at home okay and i wanted to ask you uh, tamana a lot of people see this lockdown as negative and yeah for the right reasons you know jobs are getting cut you know there's the issue of migrant workers there's uncertainty but uh, at the same time whenever there's negativity there's always some positivity in life there can never just be dark there's dark and light together yeah so what are two or three things that you think has really come out for you from this lockdown something that's really impacted you in a really positive way in a differentiating way what's come out from you when you look at this lockdown and you weigh the pros and cons what is it that's impacted you in a positive manner from the lockdown that's currently happening so for me what's been a large part of of my life is pace i've always craved for pace like i always want everything mm-hmm. to happen really fast uh i myself would be running around all the time um if i could summarize all of this and say it's only during the lockdown have i learned how to chew my food slowly cuz all my life i think i've just like chomped my food and swallowed it i've never been able to pace myself so it's only during this period where time seems like it doesn't matter how much time you do you take to complete something so i've been able to actually be do things with a lot more awareness which i think is so yeah. essential uh uh for all of us to just be like aware of things we're doing like whether you're cleaning your cupboard or you're eating your food or you're reading something or you're mm-hmm. talking to someone i feel like uh that was uh, was something that i um i think i realized in this period of lockdown and i also realized the value of um you know how having family around can be such a huge support in these in these times because whatever said and done it's emotionally um a lot to process Because right. you're just at home and you don't get to go down and you don't get to go out, um, but I still think it's it's the most uh, uh, intelligent thing that our government did because I don't think we could have our healthcare system couldn't have handled absolutely um, yeah. things going beyond what it already is, which is a lot anyway. And I think uh, the timely lockdown actually has contained a lot of. Um, uh you know a lot of destruction so i think um i think it's been it's in that sense it's good and i think whatever time it takes i think we all have to stick it out because um i can't imagine it any other way absolutely yeah no you're you're very right about that i like that you brought up that point you know the healthcare system right now cannot manage it anymore there's no place in hospitals things are gotten really bad so i think the lockdown really helps people on the front line as well and it just prevents yeah. other people you know a lot of people who are getting sick can't even get basic treatments right now it's not because the doctors don't want to work it's because they're so busy so i think we can yeah. we can support our own states by staying at home and you know observing the rules which are laid down in our best interest so i had i have yeah. a question for you over here someone's asked yeah about your hair people want to know what you do for your hair so two or three tips how to man her maintains her amazing hair you know for me right now i have if you can believe me i have just let go and i haven't mm. done anything to myself except for i think the problem and i've seen this happen even on my account in fact i was about to uh, look at some of the questions that came my way uh, sure. and i've realized that everybody wants to know to get good hair good skin everybody wants to know that but the point is is everyone willing to do what it takes 
Uh, Luke, are you with me? I'm with you. I'm with you. I am. Can you? Uh, I'm I with think, you. Yeah. I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. yeah. Right. Mm. Um, I think the 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 thing is there are the basic. It all kind of boils down to. let food be thy medicine because i think mm-hmm. it all starts with the nutrition it starts with us eating right and then thereafter everything else which is external is everything helps to some extent but the external things can only are can only help marginally i don't That's think true. anything external can really really be um, can really bring about a sustainable change so mm-hmm. um what i noticed is when i uh, apart from the food i was eating uh, the addition of uh, supplements just using what supplements are good for you uh, basic right. supplements because right now Correct. if you're looking at this present situation it's all it's all boiled down to immunity right we're all Correct. talking about immunity which um, which none of us were kind of prepared for like we were thinking more about okay if something goes wrong let's have a medicine for it but nobody actually thought of the precaution part of it and the precaution Very in today's true. time and age of this having a great immunity yeah so i think uh, for me in terms of hair uh, i have actually i've always like growing up i think uh, i always opted for more natural stuff i never kind of try to do anything that's um mm-hmm. you know um that's artificial because artificial. i think like that's not sustainable Uh, Absolutely. So the good old coconut oil, uh, I think, is and especially because it's really hot right now, um, yeah. and uh, just using stuff that cools your uh, cools your system down internally as well as externally. Uh, mm-hmm. Onion juice again is something that is yeah, uh, it's really about. cooling, um, and it's good for you, good for your hair. Um, So yeah, these are things I've done, and they're so basic. Like when people want to know, I'm like, what do I tell you? Because I don't. The thing is, the the way to do it is not to do things to yourself. Because the more we kind of try to fiddle with stuff and try to correct it, I think it just kind of, you know, uh, it only causes stress. I don't think it actually addresses most of the issues. I appreciate what you said. I mean, that's real honesty out there. You said you just let go, and sometimes our bodies just do the right things, like you rightly yeah. said. you know everyone usually tries to give an answer of what they do and 10 different things and 15 different things but i yeah. i really appreciate your honest answer you let go you eat right you do the basics and your body gives you what it's designed to give you which is good hair i think a lot of people make their lives too complicated trying to fix a small problem but they miss the basics of what the human body requires now i appreciate that answer have you got any questions that came up from your side i'm looking yes, at yes i do actually i'm just going to uh, a lot of people want to know what your next movie is going to be and all of that stuff but i'm not going to answer ask you that question right now <laughs> um yeah so i'm using my mother's phone to read the questions because my phone is here mm so i think the good old question is being asked by being akshay kumar that's the name of the account um okay the persons asking immune system kaise better kare because mm-hmm. that's our like the hot right. question of the season absolutely so i think it's really simple if people are eating their basic food like i said if you're eating a basic indian diet okay let's look at a basic indian diet there would be like kichdi vegetable dal rice that itself has turmeric it's got different spices that is great for immunity ginger garlic onion turmeric all the indian spices the indian garam masala itself is an immunity booster because all of those spices have scientifically been proven to boost now if you look at our local fruits right now mangoes great immunity booster coconut water coconut great immunity booster pineapples watermelon these are the seasonal fruits that are growing right now and we have the indian amla the uh, indian gooseberry that is so rich in vitamin c it has more vitamin c sometimes than pharmaceutical vitamin c You know, so if people just eat basic food that we've grown up eating the right way. Right now, I'm not worried about people eating outside food because there are no restaurants open. So everyone's doing home food, and that itself is good for immunity because your mums and you know everyone cooks food with love in India. I think that's a big differentiating factor. You know, the amount of energy that's put into food. Then we have our green leafy vegetables. We have your rajma, your chana. 
you can't go wrong with this. Pure ghee is an immunity booster. Pure coconut oil is an immunity booster. Yeah. So depending on the states that people live in, like, you know, as you go further up north, you have mustard oil, then you have coconut oil towards the south. Try to use cold-pressed oils because that's quality oil. Refined oil isn't good for us. We should try to use the wood-pressed, the original oils. And if we can keep sugar away from our diets, minimum, once in a way, we're going to have strong immune systems. But over and above food, it's also sleep, as you know. If you have sleep deprivation, your immune system is going to be right down. And if you have too much of stress as well and you're not working out, at least 30 minutes of workout a day is what the body requires to at least maintain a strong immune system. So, you know, Tamana, a lot of people don't have to spend money on immunity. If they do the basics every day, they have a strong system already. If you're binging on alcohol, smoking too many cigarettes, not sleeping well at night, constantly stressed out, these are things that break down the immune system. So we've got to keep it really simple. Right. Uh, I'm just going to ask you some more. So yeah, I think again, this I'm sure is a very common question asked to you. Uh, which foods increases our metabolism and burns fat in the body? Uh, this is V Mithun double K15. This is the account that asks. Um, so there are no magic foods. There are no magic foods. There are certain foods that can boost your metabolism. But without exercise and without good sleep at night, these foods will not work. So there are a lot of high metabolic foods. You have like black coffee. This can boost your metabolism. You have coconut oil. You have pure ghee. You have nuts like almonds, cashew nuts, peanuts. You know, you have chana, the Indian chana, roasted chana. You have sweet potato. These are all metabolism-boosting foods. Even black tea. Black tea is, an immune, is a metabolism booster. But a lot of people, including green tea, but a lot of people just think if they have these foods, their metabolism will boost. But they have to do the right amount of exercise with the right amount of sleep, and then these foods work better. There are no magic foods that exist in the world at all. There are good foods that work together with good lifestyle and that in turn helps us to lose weight. So what you're saying is uh, these foods have a certain amount of uh, fat burning properties, but the only thing is right. it works in a combination. It doesn't Absolutely. work in isolation. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, okay, noted. Um, So again, a very important question, and I think uh, I struggled with it initially uh, during the lockdown, is how to um, how to balance sleep in this period uh, of quarantine because a lot of us are either sleeping very little or we are oversleeping. So I right. I also feel like oversleeping is as bad as absolutely uh, yeah. So what do how does one deal with that, and is there any uh, mm -hmm. method that one can use to regularize their sleep? So it's simple. I always tell people at least Monday to Friday, try to go to sleep at the same time every day, irrespective. Set your bedtime and get into bed. You want to be awake late on Saturday night to watch a movie or Friday night and, you know, all of that stuff. You can do that. But even if you sleep at, say, set your sleep time at 10 o'clock or 10.30 every night, you still have, if you organize your time, you are able to do everything in a day. You know, when people, most people don't know how to organize their time. They have something called time wasters in their day. They start off with something, they get distracted, they start reading something on social media and it moves on from one thing to another and they realize one or two hours has just gone mindlessly on social media. My whole point is you should be able to have a good seven to eight hours of deep sleep kept aside for you. Then you have your work hours, you have your meal hours, your exercise time and over and above that you have three to four hours of extra time. You can use that to consume Netflix content, do whatever. I think if people plan their days really well, they find out that they have a lot of time. When we don't plan our days, our sleep keeps changing every single day. But I really think if we put in the discipline of be it 9.30, 10, 10.30, 11, 11.30, whatever time you want to sleep at night, fix it. And Monday to Friday, get into bed at the same time. So your body starts working according to a rhythm and a clock. And after a while, you get so used to it that you won't compromise your sleep. And set an alarm if you're oversleeping because oversleeping isn't good for us. You know, maximum seven to eight hours of deep sleep is good. When we oversleep, that's not good for us. It's not good for our weight. It's not good for our heart. So then set an alarm if you feel, you know, or put a, like if I wake up because I know I have a client call, okay, I have a purpose to wake up to. 
if you don't have a purpose to wake up to, it's difficult. So set a purpose, like you're going to go and make breakfast, or you're going to go and work out, you're going to do a yoga class. So when there's a purpose in the mind, automatically you want waste, you, you don't want sleep, you know, you want sleep longer and longer because your subconscious mind knows you need to wake up to something. So I think yeah. these are the simplest tips, organizing your time and fixing your bedtime. That solves most people's problems. Uh, I mean, this question is not really here, but I would want to ask you, uh, sure. considering it's summer and uh, we are not actually spending that much time outside, mm -hmm. uh, how does one keep uh, your system cool and how do you deal with summer? And also we will be very soon getting into monsoon. So what do we yeah. do to keep, uh, you know, balance in our system? Okay. Are there foods that we could, we could eat that mm -hmm. help? Great. So that's a great question. So in summer, if we notice there are fruits that grow and buy vegetables, these are automatically cooling. These are automatically cooling foods. So if we eat these foods right now, during summer, we already keep cooling. If I start eating a lot of junk food, I'm going to create heat in my body. So I can have mangoes, every vegetable that grows locally, every fruit, there's watermelon, there's pineapple. Certain fruits don't grow in the season. We shouldn't be eating them, even though they're available, because they're not seasonal. Yep. Every fruit decides the body temperature, you know, according to, you know, the weather outside. We have coconut water, which is a summer cooler. You have your normal lemon water. Just take a nimbu, make a glass of nimbu pani, put a little bit of salt in. It's a great, great drink. We've got to stay away from heavy foods right now because heavy foods create more heat and we have lighter foods. So today I posted a lunch picture of just curd and rice. I learned this from yeah. South India. I think it's the most amazing food ever. Just curd, rice with some, you know, uh, deep fried, uh, fried curry leaves on the top and just have some protein with it. And it's a complete meal. You don't feel heavy. You feel light. And I think you've got to stay hydrated. The more water you have, the better. A lot of people are very dehydrated, so their bodies heat up. So if they're able to do this, it's absolutely fine. Even the clothing that we wear, a lot of people today wear synthetic clothing. They should be wearing normal cotton clothing at home. You know, when we go out, all the clothes we wear is very synthetic. It doesn't allow your skin to breathe. But in summer, we need pure cotton because it allows us to set our body temperature as well. So it's the simplest things to follow the ways of nature. What nature gives you in summer is what we should be eating. As the weather changes and the monsoon starts, we'll find more uh, difference in vegetables and fruits. That should become part of our diet because that's helping us with more immunity, temperatures lesser. So if we follow the laws of nature, most people can let go, like you said. Just follow the laws of nature. Your body will look after you in most cases. When we do unnatural things, then we need to do so many complicated things to get our health back into order. Back. Keep it simple. Yeah. I absolutely agree. Also, why? I mean, of course, mango is is the is the fruit of the season, and uh, it's quite uh, uh, it's quite uh, unfortunate that a lot of people think that mangoes are very uh, are bad for you because they are uh, you know high in calorie. Um, mm -hmm. Some even think it makes them fat, and so does. I think banana is another infamous uh, yeah. fruit. Um, but I've been on our plan so many times and I've actually eaten this and it's, it's been great for me. Uh, can you teach people or rather give an advice as to how they should be consuming these foods and what's, why, why the myth and can you bust it by telling us how to deal with that? Sure. So fruits never make us fat. Now, a lot of people overeat fruits and they have something called fructose mm -hmm. malabsorption. Now that can that can actually make your diabetes worse and it can actually make you put on fat. You know, you see people eating a big platter of fruits. If you look at the way nature has given it to you, it's given you one mango. It's given yeah. you one apple. It's given you one. When it's given us a bigger fruit like a papaya or a watermelon, it means you share it. It's like yeah. that. So you can, fruits cannot make you fat. When you break it down nutritionally, it's 0.001% of fat. Okay, but now if you're a diabetic and you're eating too much, obviously you have glucose intolerance. That can make you put on weight. And if we eat it the wrong way, people eat fruit at midnight. People eat fruit in the night, late night. That's a simple carb. It gives you a lot of energy. If you're not expending the energy, it gets stored as fat. So we want to eat fruits on an empty stomach earlier in the day, before sunset, finish our fruits, and enjoy the fruits that nature has given you locally. They cannot make you sick. Of course, there are good fruits and bad fruits. A lot of fruits in the market are spurious. People inject them with sugar, with color. There are carbide ripening and all of that stuff. That's why we should support our local farmers. And when we start taking from our local farmers, we get real food. 
When there's a middleman who comes in between, we get all of the rubbish in the market. So there is good fruit and bad fruit at the same time. But fruits cannot make you fat. Very few people in our life, we have to stop them from fruit because they have a problem with the liver. They are some, some of them have fatty livers or they have a gut issue where they can't absorb uh, yeah. fructose. So that's the only thing. The, the, the law of fruits enjoy about two to three fruits in a day, even two fruits a day, even one fruit a day is great for you. But keep it seasonal, local, best digested on an empty stomach. Uh, also look for people like me who've been mm -hmm. sometimes awake at night. What is, a, so if, if one has to eat something, one is hungry in the middle of the night, what should you eat? Because you, if you don't want to eat the wrong stuff, because we all want right. to go out for the, you know, maybe like, maybe something sugary, maybe something salty. So that's when, you know, all the wrong stuff happens. So what, what would we eat if we happen to be awake and if we are craving food? So I think one of the best things we can do, I'll give you two. You're, you know, it's a handful of nuts, may sound a little bit, bo a little bit boring, or popcorn, homemade popcorn. All of us love popcorn, not the microwave popcorn. That's like poison. But you know, you get popcorn kernels, you put in a pressure cooker, add a little bit of turmeric salt, so you're getting salt, a little spice. That is the best midnight snack you can have. It's fiber, it's good for you, it'll fill you up, and it'll make you happy. So I think that's something great if you're watching a movie at night or a handful of nuts. But I think once a lot of people get into the system of fasting, after about three to four days, you don't feel hungry anymore in the night. Even if you want to eat, you just don't feel hungry. So it's a rhythm of the yeah. body. But if you must, I would really suggest popcorn to people. And kernels are available all over the country in the markets. Buy them, put them in a pressure cooker, you know, you can roast them in a little bit of ghee, turmeric, salt, and it's a fantastic snack. Or we can do nuts and stuff like that. Usually we would suggest a bowl of yogurt, but you know, I don't really like that too much because it's a cold food for the night. And a lot of people, they get a lot of mucus. Some people can have it without a problem. Some people get a lot of mucus yeah. in their chest when they have yogurt in the night rather than the day. So I think these are the best yeah. things. Do it once in a way, but usually, uh, post about seven or eight in the evening, the human body is not designed to break down food. We should always remember that. So we should try to finish all of our eating way before, you know, eight o'clock. And then we should be, you know, able to manage all of this. Or it could be popcorn, nuts. And once in a way, it's okay. Have a bag of chips, have a bowl of ice cream. If you're disciplined throughout the week, nothing's going to go wrong. Absolutely nothing's going to go wrong. If you do it every day, we're going to have a problem. That is fair. And um, so, yeah, I mean, these were like mostly the questions that were being asked. And these were also some of the questions were what was on my mind. Um, right. Another thing that I think commonly that's asked to me when uh, uh, in any kind of an interview or people who, who I generally talk to, uh, they always mention intermittent fasting because that's something yeah. that I think everyone is kind of hearing so much about that they all now want to know what it does and uh, whether right. it's for them or not. How can someone judge whether intermittent fasting is for them or not? Right. Yeah, I think we have time for this last question. I think intermittent fasting is beautiful. If it's done the right way, there are too many people doing it the wrong way. You know, so when it's done the right way, like you don't push yourself, you don't put yourself into a box of 16 hours, 17, 18. You wake up in the morning, you're not hungry. Anywhere between 12 to 14 to 15 is good for you. You can do 16 if you want, but a lot of people push themselves. A lot of people drink coffee and tea during their fast. They're not fasting. The idea of fasting is just water. You know, so people, I always tell people, if you want to drink coffee and tea, just don't fast. Break your fast and do it. Because a lot of people are highly acidic. They have tea and coffee in a fasted state where there's no food in the stomach. And that's a big problem. Even Ayurveda talks about not having caffeine or stimulants on an empty stomach. So if people yeah. want to fast, the benefits are, are therapeutic from immunity to fat loss, to better skin, to better hair, because you're giving your body a break from eating all the time. So I think the yeah. circadian rhythm fast is by far the most powerful. It's traditional to our country. In India, at one point, we finished our meals by sunset. And after sunset, we didn't need to sunrise. That was a beautiful 12 hours. And that is so powerful. I wish we had more time to talk about that. But, you know, we uh, a couple of days ago, Taman, I did a video on our Instagram handle about a new way of living, which teaches people to live the circadian way, which has fasting and everything. And within five days, people have changed their lives. It's therapeutic. It's miraculous. And if people can do this, they don't have to make intermittent fasting a fad. Like one day I fast 12 hours, the next day I, I do 18 hours because I'm just not hungry. Every day is going to be different. 
So we can't plan how long our body needs to fast. Our body plans that. And like you said, if we're conscious and we live with awareness and mindfulness, we know. We know when to eat. We know when to break our fast. We know if we're not hungry, our body needs to fast longer. So every day can be different. And like you said in your first point, people need to start living with awareness and mindfulness. You know, we don't have to listen to what the outside world is telling us. Your own body tells you, speaks to you every day. Your body yeah. tells you what to eat. Your body tells you what doesn't suit you, what suits yeah. you. It tells you when you overate. It tells you if a food didn't sit well in your system. I think the human body is a beautiful machine. And if we listen to it, you know, we get a lot of answers from our own bodies. I think that's a great takeaway uh, from this is to listen to ourselves and stop listening to other people because we're listening too yeah. much to other people. Too much, too much. We can take guidance, but sometimes we just got to listen to our own bodies and stuff. You know, that's how it is. Great. Thank you so much, Luke. I really Thank you. It's it. always a pleasure. It is, it is absolutely, absolutely a pleasure. And uh, yeah, I hope people who've watched have enjoyed this. You know, it's funny you spoke about summer and stuff like that. It looks like we're going to have heavy rains now. It's all dull I, around us. And, you know, it's just, it's like getting crazy dark ooh, out there. Wow. I think we're going to get a lot of fun. rain. So, yeah, that's how it is. But thank you so much for your time. Thank you for being an inspiration to so many people out there. I'll talk to you I soon. I can do the same yeah. thing to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Take care. Thanks, everyone. Take care. Bye, everyone. See you. Thank you. Bye.